All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. So, um, EIA impact identification. Um, so, what will happen as a result on the project? So, of course, um, it brings together project characteristics and baseline characteristics, which aim of ensuring that all potentially significant impacts, may it be adverse or favorable, are identified and, taking, and taken into accounts um, in the EAA. That is why um, the impact prediction, in which that is actually the next lesson, but I'm not sure if I can discuss it to you today. Uh, but the impact uh, identification is very important because um, this will be the this will be the the main need of your EIS of your EIA study. If you will not be able to identify all the impacts, all the adverse impacts or high risk impacts of your project, there is a huge possibility that your application will be denied and if your application will be denied then that will be hard because you have to um, maybe you can redo your EIA study or, or, or you can um, or you can add up as to what are the missing um, impacts that you were not able to identify in your EIA study and then of course um, characterize project activities from cradle to grave so when you say cradle to grave from the moment or from the moment it was not created yet up to its, um, let us say, decommissioning or abandonment phase. So from pre-construction to construction to operational to um, the decommissioning or abandonment phase. So we have to consider that with the impact identification. And then characterize baseline data to describe the initial environment. Because, of course, we... Uh, because, of course... Um, it will be hard to predict the impact if we do not know exactly what is the initial environmental status of the, sp of the area that we will be doing our project. In which, again, that is why the baseline data um, is very important with your EIS study. Because it will be the reference point of your impacts, of your impact predictions. Um, at the same time, it will be, at the same time, there is actually no such thing as EIA study or EIS, EIS document that has no baseline um, studies or information because, again, that is the reference point. At the same time, during the um, monitoring and audit, um, of course, whatever will be the adverse effects or whatever will be the adverse impact of your project um, and then the result of that monitoring and audit, their reference for that impact will be based on your baseline information or the initial status of the environment. All right. Um, also, um, the importance of impact um, identification is to compile a candidate list of key impacts and identify all potential primary, secondary, and cumulative impacts of the project. So, um, in which later I will show you, um, I think I have it here, an example of this impact uh, identification. Um, also, it will be um, very useful, useful um, in identifying key issues and concern and, of course, identify potential impacts or um, potential impacts or, um, yeah, impact prediction per se. So we actually have, um, this is actually the methods of impact identification. So, of course, first is the checklist. All right, so the methods of impact identification is okay so i hope that's better i hope you can um yeah i hope you can see my yeah i think you can see my slides already so we have impacts of this is the methods of impact identification of course we have the checklist 
um, the matrices, networks, overlays, and of course, um, we can also use using models. As to uh, the, the good thing with models is we can actually model and we can actually see the impacts of the study. And at the same time, we can also consider the sensitivity analysis of the situation or for the project or for the specific impact that we want to model um, from your project. So this is an example of an impa uh, um, a checklist, this is an example of a checklist. So this is, um, for example, wildlife, we have A, B, C, D, F to J. So for example, A means no effect, B means positive effect, C means negative effect, D beneficial, E adverse, and so on and so forth. And then um, this is the matrix table showing project activities range over ecosystem components. For example, we have um, wind circulation um, under the air or under the physical. Um, we will check if um, one, two, three, four actually is a number of the actions. So for example, wind circulation, we can do, uh, we will be doing that during the pre-construction. So we have to put a check to that. On my case, I'll, I'll put X. Um, um, during the construction, are we going to, to, to do a wind circulation assessment? So this is an example of a matrix table with a corresponding um, environmental components or conditions. So um, we have physical, earlier we have air, we have water. And then um, we have land and soil. We also have, for example, biological. So we have land plants, we have land animals, and we have aquatic plants. In which, basically, when you say biological, this would actually focus on species composition, population density. This is uh, more of the diversity of um, when it comes to biological flora and fauna. And then, of course, um, we also have social environments. So, for example, population characteristics. Um, is there a population change? Is there a possible ethnic or racial distribution? Relocated population, influx or outflows of temporal and seasonal, seasonal residents. We also have community and institutional structures. For example, um, is there a voluntary association? Will there be an interest group activity? Size of structure of the government and so on and so forth. So um, we can identify those um, as part of the impact uh, of your project on the specific activities or phases of your project. All right. Um, this is actually um, this is this illustration actually is an illustration of um, a certain lake pollution and how could this um, lake pollution be um, be affected by a lot of components. Um, for example, um, for example. Um, lake pollution is being contributed by um, it's actually a lot of going on here for example it is being contributed by the fishery uh, fish pen technology in which fish pen technology there is an artificial feeding and this artificial feeding can actually increase nitrogen and phosphorus and uh, at the same time it can cause eutrophication algal bloom and can cause fish kill at the same time, if there will be a fish kill, of course, it will affect um, the lake. It will affect to the lake pollution, or it can contribute to the lake pollution. At the same time, the increase of nitrogen and phosphorus because of the artificial feeding can also um, can also affect or can also contribute to the lake pollution. Anyhow, my point in this um, illustration is. Um, there are a lot of factors that can influence the lake, the pollution of a certain lake, and there are also a lot of factors that can um, that can affect and that can cause a certain pollution of a certain lake, in which therefore this can actually represent your specific study or specific project. So, um, whatever project, as I mentioned on last meeting, whatever project, whatever progress, whatever kind of development, there is always an impact. There is no such thing as zero impact because as what we all know, um, when we produce something, when we create something, there is always a byproduct. And, and, by, and to that specific um, byproduct, pollution is one of that. And pollution, as we all know, 
is a kind of an impact to the environment um, that could risk human health and the health of the ecosystem itself. So that's the point of showing you that um, of this illustration. Okay, so let's go now to the baseline categories. 